It is currently vital for our country to ratify an amendment stating that Congress shall hold the right to set a limit to the amount of funds used during a political campaign. Our country would benefit from this amendment because it would allow all citizens an opportunity to run for office. Currently, it costs around 10 to $1 million to run for office. In Congress now, 47% of Congress, Congress members are millionaires, but only 1% of Americans have that much money. The 14th Amendment gives equal rights to, of life, liberty, and property. And should liberty not include the right to run for office? Our government is based on the principles of democracy. President Kennedy said, ask not what you can do for your country, but what you can do for your country. But what you Okay, let me start that over. President Kennedy said, ask not what you can do for your country, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And shouldn't everyone not be able to contribute to their country, whether they be rich or poor? This amendment would allow everyone to be able to express their wants for the United States of America by running for office. The First Amendment of the Constitution needs to be clarified so that the people of the United States of America know that it does not say the word separation of church and state, and therefore the people can express their religion publicly and freely. A recent national poll shows that 69% of Americans believe those words are stated in the Constitution. This amendment needs to be clarified so that freedom of religion can truly be expressed in this country. How can we say in our Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God, or have the words, in God we trust, representing our country by being on our currency, and still are not allowed to have a Bible on our desks at our job or talk about religion in school? By clarifying the First Amendment, we can stop discrimination. For example, bullying in schools, which can lead to deaths, and ch children told by their teachers not to pray in public. If we stop the rumor of separation of church and state, freedom of religion will be practiced in the American life. The word separation of church and state actually came from a letter Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptist, expressing his concerns of the government's control. By writing this letter, he was restricting the government from forcing any laws favoring a religion on the people and not restricting the people from expressing their religion publicly and freely. Thomas Jefferson, although dead, can still prove that the word separation of church and state did not mean the rejection of, or abandonment of religion because he himself said, if the freedom of religion guaranteed to us by law and theory can ever rise in practice under the overbearing inquisition of public opinion, then and only then will truth prevail, prevail over fanaticism. I believe the First Amendment's clarification is crucial to our nation's development. Any person, no matter their gender preference, should be allowed to marry the person of his or her choice. This will allow same-sex marriage. Love is complicated. Love is blind to gender, and if we as a people are preventing others from marrying the person of their choice because it's believed to be a sin, then I feel that government may be too heavily influenced by religion. Obviously, religious extremists will oppose this idea. Some people believe that same-sex marriage will cause a tax increase, as some people might marry one another to gain financial benefit. The big picture is that there will be a fluctuation of marriage licenses, and as one thing leads to another, homosexuals will have equal opportunities. Some people will be unsure of how to react to this. Others will welcome the idea. Some countries have already legalized same-sex marriage, including Argentina, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. My proposed 28th Amendment is that the federal government should have the power to hang or execute any prisoner serving one or more life sentences with possibility, without possibility of parole. Uh, my first main point is overcrowding in prisons. Uh, right now they are currently 39% overcrowded and 29% of our prisons are people in the prisons would fall under this amendment, reducing the overpopulation to approximately 10%, which would keep our prisons safer and reduce the cost a lot. My second main reason is that we could save a lot of money over actually approximately $1.4 billion a year. 
because there are approximately 400 or 40,000 prisoners that would fall under this category and that's about $35,000 a year for each one of them. And my third main point is some criminals might think twice about uh, committing a crime that they know that they would get the death penalty for instead of getting life in prison because they think that they might be able to get out of prison even though they wouldn't, but the death penalty would be a lot more severe. All right, for my amendment, um, I'll be mean, amending the Second Amendment. Uh, by amending the Second Amendment, I'll be um, banning military-style weapons and um, high-clip guns. The first thing we need to ask ourselves is, um, do we really need these weapons? Um, do we really need them for like hunting or whatever? Because you don't really need them at all. Basically, all these military-style weapons, high-clip guns, are basically made for killing people. That's the only reason for it. Cause, like, no legitimate purpose for having these weapons. So these types of weapons are mostly involved in like violence and stuff. You look at like all the recent shootings, um, the Sandy Hook shooting, the Colorado shooting. You know, you see like the guns are all like semi-automatic weapons, high clip guns that are meant for killing people. That's all. Really. If they're like we ban these weapons, it'd be less violence and mostly it's. Um, lastly, um, it will like help regulate um, like which guns and can't be bought and sold. Um, it will eliminate completely eliminate um, all of the um, assault weapons and high clip guns. And it also reinforced the part of the Second Amendment that said um, we need a well regulated militia um, and increase the number of people um, who have these assault weapons and high clip guns. And in conclusion, it would be um, good to ban these weapons and high clip guns because there would be less violence and fewer people get killed. Um, yeah. um, by banning these weapons, um, you would be, be a safer environment for all of us and It'd be good. Hello, my name is Danielle Smith, and my 28th Amendment is that the tw uh, president can only stay in office for five years. They may not be reelected, and they must be a certified American citizen for 10 years or more. My one reason for that amendment is saving money. And some examples is when the president is close to ending a term, they spend a lot more money campaigning when they could be spending the money on useful ways in the United States. Another reason is working on and solving problems in the United States. Like the money issue, the president is so focused on campaigning that they don't try to fix the problems the United States is having. And my last reason, they must be a certified American citizen. The President of the United States must be a, a certified American citizen for 10 years or more. People against my amendment would mostly be the President arguing that they can only have one term. And in conclusion, I am making a slight change to the 22nd Amendment by saying they can only have one term and for so long. Um, so the president can only stay in office for five years, not be reelected, and is a certified citizen for 10 or more years because um, of controversies that we've had in the past of a citizen, a non-certified um, citizen as president and um kind of done now 
I am proposing a right to life amendment. Everyone has a right to live, including innocent children. Abortion is murder. At conception is when a baby is considered a human being. Abortion also affects a woman's conscience for the rest of her life. She realizes that she killed an innocent child just to make her life easier for the moment, but doesn't realize that she will be haunted by this child. There is never an acceptable reason for abortion, no matter what the situation may be. Hello, America. I am here to propose the Bricker Amendment. The Bricker Amendment, proposed by Senator Bricker, limits the treaty-making power that the executive branch has. Therefore, it alters the Article 2 of the Constitution. Under the Bricker Amendment, any treaty passed cannot contradict the amendment, contradict the Constitution, or allow the president to enter into executive agreements with other nations without the approval of Congress. Treaties lately and in the past have contradicted the Constitution and have essentially given the federal government too much power. Therefore, the Bureau Amendment will halt that power and put the power back into the American people's hands where it belongs. Uh, in 1919, the amendment, the 18th Amendment, was uh, issued, and and 13 years later, the 21st Amendment was issued. So, what I'm trying to get at is, we as people for the 28th Amendment should reprohibitate alcoholic beverages. Main reasons why: one, more deaths have been happening. So if we were less deaths, more people alive, but more population. Another reason, stupidity in their behavior, in people's behavior that drink, drive, all that. And then if it were to is issue, we will not be back in bootlegger time, it's been like back in 1920s. We will be happy, some of us, the main people that won't like this idea if we were to, will be the drinkers, and then the people that won't like this will be the non-drinkers. So, let's say how, I don't know, most of the drinkers are here that this is going to be issued. They're going to fight it as best they can, try to get it out of the way. Then the non-drinkers are going to be, yay, 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 let's get this, let's get it. Come on, all, all of us get together, issue it, issue it, don't, let's keep it, and then uh, yeah, I don't know anything else. <laughs> yeah. I'm here today to amend the Constitution. I believe that the drinking age should be lowered from 21 to 18 because when you turn 18 as a citizen of the United States, you're allowed to buy or use alcohol, or buy or use tobacco, vote, um, you're included in the draft. So those are some examples of being an adult and being a citizen of the country as a right when you turn 18. But I think when you turn 18 you should also be allowed to use and buy alcohol. It's contradicting the Constitution now as saying you can go fight for our country but you can't drink alcohol. <laughs> Um, we as a country in our past prohibited the use of alcohol in the 20s and also a state prohibit prohibition in the 1850s. Uh, it was left up to the federal government to um, make those laws and it didn't go very well as it is now. Um, I think that the education would also be increased on alcohol. We'd teach younger citizens, kids in school about alcohol so when they turn 18 they're well educated on it. Um, like maybe the same mistakes won't be made. Um, yeah. <laughs>